Last week we had our first visitors, had some embarrassing moments, renamed our boat and launched our Patreon. This week we are preparing the boat for our first sail. That means safety gear bought, winches serviced, the hull scrubbed, blocks checked and somehow through it all we studied for our VHF exam. If you do enjoy this video and want to see more consider hitting that subscribe button or joining the Taley tribe on Patreon. We really appreciate you being here. These are the life jackets we have already. We don't know the history of these, so we'd like to get our own upgraded ones. We think if we're gonna save money on anything, it shouldn't be life jackets. The number one thing that will save our lives. Look at my life jackets, woohoo! Got a hood, whistle, reflective straps. This bit here isn't too high up your neck, so they're really comfortable, and they were recommended online and in store. And they've also got harness attachment, thigh strap, and then they've also are automatic, so if you fall in, they will automatically go off. They've also, one in the water, no. <laughs> they also have just a manual one in case they don't go off. So we're really, really happy with those. I feel like that's a really vital bit of equipment Shit. you need yeah. in order to set sail anywhere. So we bought a, a horseshoe lifebuoy because this boat hasn't come with one. Um, it's a pretty vital bit of kit and we've just got a holder so it can go on the stanchions like that and won't fall off. <laughs> oh, Eperb! Woohoo! Woohoo! Oh, this is so exciting. If you told me a year ago I'd be getting really excited about a beacon, I wouldn't have believed you. We actually got the one with built in GPS as well. He said to test them every month. The guy actually said, don't test them every month because what happens is you don't realize, but it slowly chips away at the battery. And you don't want to do that because you've only got 48 hours once they're off. It's going to go here. A lovely bit of decor. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, and that goes there. Job is a good one going anywhere. Yeah, so I guide you across. Yesterday, I'll take you outside for this one. But in the refuse area, there's a place which is for the bins and Look what we found. We found a dam boy, which is really, really cool. I think it needs a lot of maintenance, but super happy that we've got that because they're really expensive. So what we're going to do is it has it has a light on the end and the light's full of water. So we will need to replace that. We've just found an outboard near us and we're going to drive there now. The guy's really nice, we've got a really good deal on it. This is one of the things we really needed. Fingers crossed, I can lift it. That's what I'm going to try and do when we get there. But yeah, we hopefully have an outboard, which is so exciting. Oh wait, you're going to have to, it's a bit of a tricky job. This, <sighs> lovely. Oh, thank you, any trouble, you got yeah. my number. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Nice one, thank you. Have fun, stay safe. We will. Yeah, we'll do. Yourself. Yeah, we will. Already. Bye. We just picked up our little outboard and we are so excited. We tested it out. Um, it works great. The owner, well, the previous owner was so nice. And yeah, we're really happy for our little outboard. Very fuely, a bit noisy, but excited to have it accommodate our adventure. <laughs> So the good news is we have ourselves an outboard Ooh. and we have our lovely life raft here. The bad news is, let's show them the damage sack. So um, yeah, we're both really, really stained. Wearing light colour clothes was well, not a smart idea. I see the full damage. Oh, it's so bad. Oh well, it's going to happen. Look at that sunset though. Oh my gosh. We just got these water jugs out. We've got 
one, two, three, four, four of these down here, and 20 litres. So we're gonna tip them out because we don't know when this water was put in and before we leave anywhere, we're gonna obviously fill it up again. So the tipping begins. Yeah, this water. <laughs> Just wanted to check. Good evening, how are you doing? It's, be it's beautiful here, right? I'll, sh I'll show you what it is here quickly. Look, look at this, it's lovely. Uh, Apart from that. Oi. <laughs> Can you duck down for a minute, Becca? <laughs> we uh, all our water containers, but we're just emptying them out because we don't know how long the water's been sitting in there. So we're just yeah getting rid of all the old water. What a lovely evening. Good morning. So it's the next day. Our block on our traveller system is just seized. Basically, we don't want to sail before we've replaced that because if that snaps out there just going to replace that. Zach's going to start servicing the winches today which is really exciting. We had to wait for an allen key set to come. We need one allen key which we didn't have obviously and they didn't sell up by themselves so now we've had to buy a set of 20. <laughs> That's just how it works with tools. It's, it's actually a beautiful day. We'd love to go for a sail on a day like this but the boat isn't quite up to spec quite yet. We also need to do our VHF license and we need to get a new VHF. This, this whole thing because it a doesn't run very well and b one of these doesn't even turn yeah it's so jammed isn't it yeah it is that definitely doesn't come off either does it no or maybe it did once upon a time i reckon that's original yeah i think so it's so seized up it's just gonna wreck the lines if we put those through there because mm -hmm. this bit's okay but it is a bit sticky but i'm yeah. sure we could clean that and loosen them up is this what we need but i don't know how these don't turn over yeah, I don't know how they come out. I don't know whether we can look into like a yacht that's been selling for parts. Oh, we just had such a successful visit. They can replace, luckily, just the sheath, which is so nice. We were thinking we'd have to replace the whole thing and they can just take it apart, replace the bits that are broken and put it back together. And then we also showed them the end stopper for the traveller to stop the car from sliding off the end. And this is how it looks at the moment. I've never seen a bit of nylon plastic like that. It's just so... It, this is a 1987. It's a relic. Yeah, um, but I it's imagine so, it's original. I've never seen something crow quite like that. No, it's brittle and it's just flaking plastic off. And the woman in there said, wow, look at that. <laughs> so, but they can replace those two um, and they're new and smaller and a bit less bulky looking yeah. than that as well, which is really nice. So that was such a successful visit, feeling really happy. Yeah, so. It's nice we get to reuse something instead of throwing away a whole yeah, system. Yeah, we're all about sustainability on this boat. <laughs> and it just seems such a waste to have to throw away a perfectly fine bit of kit just because they don't make it anymore but we found a place that will fix it so thumbs up and then we went and picked up a few other items which we needed on board Tayley we have ourselves a brush get it in what did he say i said is it going to be abrasive enough he said a bit of elbow grease goes a long way <laughs> got a, a cork remover tool. A ship's log because we haven't actually got one at the moment and we want to be able to keep track of maintenance, repairs, every time we sail, the conditions and all sorts so it's got a daily log entry. I think it's just a good habit to keep and it will also help us know when to replace and maintain things in the future because we'll know when we did it last. So that's that. Chisel set for the pegs and the teak deck and loads of other bits I'm sure we'll get a good bit of use out of that. Uh, a soft bristle brush for the hull of the boat because it's a bit algae at the moment mm -hmm. so we actually need to give it a good clean a hose on the end of it as well. And this is just a car one. We thought it would have to be a bit more abrasive but actually you don't want to scratch cars you don't want to scratch boats and I think that's about it. I've got to now go back to another shop and return an item that didn't fit on our boat for the horse shoe boy that we've got at the moment because it didn't actually fit. Alright, so that's really silly. So that doesn't fit ours, but apparently all you need to do is get a standing knife and there's actually, you can see it in there, there's another hole that you can just put in there. 
it's a really faint mark, but it's a really thin bit of plastic there. So you can just get a Stanley knife and go around yourself and make that hole, but there's already a through hole there. So I don't know why, I don't know why they didn't just include that already pre-cut, but hey ho, we're going to give that a cut when we get back now and see if that actually fits. Oh yeah, Zach, on the inside, it's really obvious that they're, like there's like curves where they should be. Oh well, we live and we learn. Yeah. It's still quite tough to cut through. I think if I do it in quarters, it'll be easier. <laughs> there might be random bits of black plastic everywhere. They keep flinging. Right. That's what it was like. This is what it's like now. Hopefully that fits. I'm gonna actually go and check if it fits first. So oh, Zach. Yeah. It's too big. You're kidding me. No, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I'm not I'm actually not. That look. It's not it's just gonna fall down. Okay, that was a little bit of a fail. I cut it too big. <laughs> but it's fine, I've learned from my mistakes and I'm not gonna do that again. And now I've got some hose to fix it. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut it. This is what bread knives are for. Right, measure, cut. Just chop the life rafter MJ Marine Safety. Yeah, if anyone's ever in Plymouth and needs a life raft service or anything, pop into this guy. He was really, really nice. I asked him a load of questions about R1 because we got our life raft second hand and he was a wealth of information and gave me some good advice about if we should get a service, shouldn't get a service, um, and what to do in the future. But he was, yeah, a, a very nice guy. I've got turpentine, white spirit for the winches, and I've also now got. I hope I've still got it. Um, a new 8mm drill bit, which I needed because I dropped the last one in the water. So hopefully that won't happen again and hopefully it's not a in a drill bit. It's just a standard one, so hopefully this will do the job. But yeah, I just have to be a bit more careful with this drill bit. I did some, but I just can't get close enough really. And I want to just be taking the top layer off. I want to be doing a really good job. So I think when we get a tender, we're going to just put it in the water and just pull ourselves around the boat and scrub. I think that'll be just the best way to do it because it's too difficult to do it from the land really, unless you're really close to the boat. So I did try pulling the boat in at points, but it just pulls in to just go straight back out because our lines are quite slack at the moment because there's been a lot of swell. So we want the boat to be able to move as much as possible. So if we bring it in too much, it will snatch on the lines. So I think when we pick up a little inflatable dinghy, we'll do that. And if not, at some point when we anchor somewhere, me and Zach will hop in the water and just head under and scrub it down. So yeah, but the brush works, which is a good success. We thought it was gonna to be too soft, but actually it's getting all that algae off. I guess it's not too encrusted on. So next mission today is to change out and clean up hopefully two of the bigger winches we've got here. Oh, just pulled everything apart. There's some pretty disgusting bits. That's full of water, so I'm gonna reseal that as well. Probably gonna sand down that and I might even leave it to dry for a little bit before I put it on, just so you can get seal on it because it is mini. Should really be like that. Where's all that gunk going, Zach? Right in this pot. Yeah, and what's the pot used for normally? Uh, washing up and everything like that. But it's metal. Washing so up? Washing not up? Not washing up, but cooking. Cooking. I guess that's what we've come to now. It's just everything has to have a dual purpose, and if it means slightly turpsy food, that's is what it is. And greasy. <laughs> right. As you know, the turps breaks it down, so it'll be right. I don't know what's best <laughs> or what's worse, to be honest. I'm gonna 
give that a good clean as well and grease it up in a minute but I'm just going to soak all these parts to begin because these are all minging. <laughs> this has not been done for a very long time. <laughs> oh Becca this is grim. <laughs> I don't think this has been serviced for absolutely ages. Really so good. much better. Well done. I've got frits come out. Oh, there's so much more in here as well. <laughs> I can just hear it moving. What are you doing? I'm just pouring the turpentine into a bottle and putting it in like the hazardous waste bit of the marina here because that really shouldn't go in the water. So mm -hmm. nice, responsible human. Yeah. <laughs> just regreasing at the moment, and I'll show you what I've just done. It's our locking mechanism, but I'm just going to grease the inside of that as well. And you get the little ham. I know what I need you to do is just give a light tap to something. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Flush. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Oh. You're doing such a good job. Thanks. Well done. Oh wait, did I grease up the inside of that? I didn't. I need to take that out. Oh. I've just put it all on here. I just put a few screws on and there's a sealant all around the outside just to protect the inside of the winch. So I'm just gonna put all these screws in now. Wow. Bit smoother. Yeah, that's so different. There's no like rattling anymore that I can hear. That's so good, Zach. I don't think I've ever felt a smooth winch. Should we just keep doing it? It's really interesting now because I know what those clicks are and mm -hmm. where they're coming from. That's so good to do though before we actually set sail. Becca, you want to be a massive help again? That one there, see it moving? Yep. Lovely, there we go. Okay, next one around this way. Sorry, it's all right. grease makes it really hard. Just a little bit more. That's really wet under it. Uh, it's because the grease is so waterproof, mm -hmm. I don't think it's damaged the wood as much as it should have. Because mm -hmm. it's just kind of sat on top. So I'm just servicing our last big two-speed winch on the starboard side and I've got to this bit and it's still, what should happen is both of those should click in each time and they are, but that one has got the spring still working because it's still got two long bits, but this one the spring has snapped on that little arm there. So I need to go and get a new one of those. Zach has been cracking on, like, I mean, spending all day doing the winches for the last few days and he has done an exceptional job with cleaning and greasing them. However, obviously we are new to this and as much research as you can do, sometimes just isn't enough. <laughs> and although the winches feel amazing now, we think in hindsight we've used a bit too much grease and we also greased the pools, which are the little springs. We only lightly greased them, but someone actually left a comment saying um, put some oil on them. So we started researching into oiling them and now we found that maybe oiling them is best. So <laughs> we have no oil. So I'm going to go out now and get some Lumar oil. It's annoying. We spent a ton of time on them, but mistakes happen and we'd rather fix the mistake now then get out into the ocean and realize that it just wasn't the best thing to do apparently when you have too much grease when salt water flushes over them it just all cakes up in the grease and it gets all cruddy and gross so we don't really want that happening so zach is back on the boat right now taking all the winches back apart and taking the grease off he's leaving a thin layer but yeah that was pretty frustrating real life keeping it real So it is two days before we go sailing for the first time, woohoo! And very last minute, but we're getting it done. Um, we are doing our VHF course starting in a few hours and we are doing it until kind of this time tomorrow, um, hoping we've revised enough and then we've got our exam booked at 4.30 tomorrow. So a bit crazy, it's all go. Bit Apparently there's, minute. yeah, a bit last minute. There's loads of content to learn, but that's fine. And then we'll have our own radio license and then we'll have the ship's radio license and it'll all be good and great.
just got out of our radio exam and guess what? We passed! Woohoo! We both actually got exactly the same mark, which was really funny. We got 92%. Woohoo! Different things wrong. Yeah, different things wrong. So it's fine, but together. We together we can smash it. <laughs> um, but the guy was really nice and yeah, it was a really enjoyable experience to be honest. It's our last qualification we properly need before set sail. And feeling really happy. We can now legally operate our VHF. Oh yeah. It's weird that it was the only one that we actually legally needed to do the stuff we needed to do though. Yeah, it means anyone can just get a boat and just go sailing. Because yeah, legally we didn't have to do the um, day skippers, did we? No, legally we don't actually even have to have a VHF, which is kind of crazy because we're smaller than 13.5 meters. But it's obviously highly recommended for people. Smashed it. Moments pass, make this one count Until you're so good at dragging yourself